Hello and welcome to the John Ark Show. Today, we're going to interview actress Kristen Minter. She starred in many great movies and TV shows like Home Alone, ER, Ray Donovan, CSI, and Cool as Ice with Vanilla Ice, just to name a few. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our free channel. Uh, we also encourage you to like, comment, and follow us. Uh, we're going to have a lot of great celebrity interviews coming up, so click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time we upload a new episode. I'd also like to tell you about HollywoodIsCalling.com. It's a great service that allows you to purchase live phone calls from your favorite celebrities, so check them out. It's something you can buy for yourself or as a gift for someone you love. Now, let's say hello to Kristen Minter. Hello, Kristen. Welcome to the John Ark Show. How are you today? <laughs> I'm good. How are you today, John? I'm really good. Nice to have you on the show. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, it's our pleasure. So first of all, I, I want to tell you that we went back and we watched some of your work, the work you did in various movies and TV shows, and it's very clear that you were very talented from day one. How old were you when you began um, in the business, and how did you get your first significant break? Uh, well, thank you, first of all. And um, I would say my first significant break, I think the first job I booked was um, The Outsiders, the TV show. Okay. And I remember um, I didn't know anything about acting at the time. I went in and I thought, well, I'm just going to be myself. And so I'm playing white trash, right? My dad gets very upset about that. <laughs> um, and I remember I thought the character was kind of sad and they started laughing at me. And so I got very perplexed and I was like, I don't, I don't think you should be laughing at this character, you know? And, and there's like these really big people in the room, like Fred Ruse and, you know, I'm not sure if Francis Ford Coppola was there, but, you know, it was a lot of, um, anyway. <laughs> so I would have to say that was probably my first big break. Um, besides meeting the guy who got me that audition, who I met at a barbecue and he just thought I was funny. I guess I'm just innately funny and I just don't even know it. Speaking of which, I have a really important question to ask you. And that is, okay. what is your astrological sign? Virgo. I thought so. I thought so. Okay. So you started in Home Alone, which is one of the biggest hits of all time. How dramatically did it change your life when it came out or did it? Um, I think the most dramatic thing about Home Alone for me was um, I remember when I was about to screen it and I was going in to see Goodfellas and I remember I started getting physically sick in the movie theater because when I would look up, I would see these heads that were like so humongous on the screen. And all of a sudden I started panicking about seeing my face that big on a screen like it didn't occur to me as an actor that i would have to actually watch what i did and um yeah i remember i i saw home alone i was so upset um i've only seen it that one time i i i guess how it changed my life is i do not enjoy seeing my face that large and how old were you when you screened it 22. interesting okay so, you know, as everybody knows, Home Alone is an unbelievably charming movie. It, it's not one of those movies that families love to watch on the holidays. What do you attribute that success and longevity to? Um, I think Macaulay Culkin is like one of the cutest things in the whole world. That plus it's every family's worst nightmare to leave one of your kids home alone where you can't get back to them. And then how every kid probably has to imagine what they would do if they were alone and how much fun they would have doing it. Hmm. No, speaking of Macaulay Culkin, um, he did an interesting movie called Party Monster. It's about the club kids in right. New York back in the day. And he was really unexpectedly good in that adult role. Um, but he doesn't seem to do very many movies these days. Do you think he's just waiting for the right projects or is something else going on? You know, I couldn't beg to guess. Um, I know that he was, I think, he, I believe he was a DJ. And um, other than that, like, I, I, I've seen Mac once since um, Home Alone. And he was having lunch with Mila 
Kunis. I don't want to say her name wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, and I walked up to him and I said, are you Macaulay Culkin? He's like, sometimes. And I said, I was in Home Alone with you. He's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. He's like, how are you? I'm like, good, how are you? Um, but I, I don't know, you know, uh, he's, everybody in his family is an actor. Bonnie Bedelia is his aunt. All his brothers are actors. I don't know, maybe he got tired of it. I, I have no idea what he's waiting for. Hmm. Now, you start- I always in- knew Kieran would be huge. What's that? I always knew Kieran Culkin would be huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you seen him on that show that uh, that, that yes. he's on cable? Uh-huh. That? He's horrible on that show. He's such a terrible character. <laughs> yeah, but he's one of the reasons the show is a success. Yeah, he's great. I always knew he'd be a great actor. He was very natural in Home Alone, and I think he was like four. Mm. So you starred in Cool as Ice with Vanilla Ice, who at that point was one of the biggest musical stars in the world. And admittedly, I have not seen it. So we went back and we watched some of the footage. And uh, and you guys are either, you know, acting brilliantly or you genuinely liked each other. Which was it? Um, I, I think that we genuinely liked each other. I think sometimes he didn't know what was going on. Um, in the, in the, you know, as an actor, you know, that's not his genre. Um, but I thought he was very good in the movie. And we had, I thought we had a really good time. Yeah, it's, it's evident on the screen. Now, I'm sure a lot of people auditioned for the role that you got. Can you tell us how competitive it was? And what do you think it was that put you over the top? Did, did he simply like you? Was that, was that what it was? He wasn't there. I, I was actually super sick when I went to read for it. And um, I remember I went to read for it and then I went to lay down and then they called me back the same day. And I was like, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to make it, you know. And I went back and there were Drew Barrymore was sitting in the waiting room when I came out. And I believe that actually Gwyneth Paltrow had the role before me. Oh, any idea as to as to what happened? Yeah. No. I mean, I, I think that's the case. I, I don't even know if that's true. I was told that someone had it first. I don't know. I don't even know if that's true. Hmm. So you were also on a hit TV show called ER for eight seasons. Um, how did you like doing episodic television? And, and how did you enjoy working with that particular cast? Well, I have to say that ER is a well-oiled machine. It is probably one of the most um, technically complicated shows um, I, I've ever worked on. Um, it, you know, it was choreographed so um and it they were oneers so and a oneer means it's one camera shot it's one camera and they're they're like weaving in and one character brings you to another character and then like you pass something and the camera follows that so it, i found it a little bit stressful but the stress that i felt made me funny because I would have some like spastic reaction. And then I think that's why they kept me on the show. I was only supposed to do three episodes and um, I ended up doing 78 or something like that. Now that show also made George Clooney a star. Now, how did you like working with him? What was your perception of him early on in the series and then towards the end of the series? Well, I came in second season, the season I believe he left. Um, I love George, he was funny. Uh, he used to play practical jokes on all of us all the time. And um, I remember that I find like, so he would say so answer the phone all the time because the, I'm the admit clerk, he would goo the phone. So like during the take, I'd have to like hold it together with goo all over my ear. Um, and so one day I went out into his trailer and put goo all over his phone. I'm like, George, your phone's ringing. And so he, I got him finally, but he was great. You know, like I played basketball with him. We had a great time. Yeah, he seems like a good soul. Yeah. What had more of an impact on your life and on your career? Was it a hit movie like Home Alone or the TV show ER? Yeah, that's a really good question because I I don't, I mean, like I know that I get acting jobs and get called into rooms because of the work that I've done. But like as far as impacting my regular life, I mean, I suppose I've never noticed, you know, I because I lived in Los Angeles and everybody there is an actor. So um, now I've moved 
uh, well, I don't know if I moved east, but I'm on the east coast. And it doesn't, it hasn't really, it's a job. You know, it's my job. The very high stress, difficult job. But when you get the part that you love, I mean, it's all about the work for me. Um, so. So you also worked on Ray Donovan, which is another show that people love. Now, when I first saw this show being promoted, I really didn't want to like it. I thought, eh, you know, it's, <laughs> but then, you know, I watched it and I was hooked. It was, and you know, the lead for the, uh, for the, for the show is really much better than I thought he would be. I mean, I've seen him in the sum of all fears mm -hmm. uh, when he goes to Russia as a, as a spy. But uh, but he's really good. You know, he has a certain calmness, a certain stillness uh, to, to his portrayal of his character. That's really effective. Um, what was it like working on that series? Um, it was really, it was, you know, he was very nice to me. Like he came, I was watching. So I get to set and I haven't eaten, of course, because I'm in my underwear in the first scene. So I haven't eaten in weeks. And I'm sitting there watching behind the monitor, the stunt people doing the stunt. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, I, I'm so glad that there's a stunt girl for me. And I was hoping I wasn't gonna have to do that stunt, but I did have to do the stunt. And um, he is very strong and he's very confident and very calm. He is very a calming presence. And he came up to me, he's like, so, where are you from? And I'm like, Oh, you know, I'm fine. I'm not nervous. I'm just, I'm just trying to conserve my energy. He's like, I know you're not nervous. He's like, where are you from? I'm like, Oh my God, you're making small talk with me. Like I'm so, you know, I, I was just, like I said, it's always about the work for me. So like, sometimes I forget I can make friends on set, you know? Um, and he was, he was lovely. He told me all kinds of things. He was learning to play the guitar so he could sing a song to his daughter on the show. And um, he was lovely. He was just you, a lovely man. Do you remember what the stunt was? Did you have to fall down or was it something else? Oh, have you not seen it? I have not. I jump on his back and he flips me over his head onto a bed, which I bounce off of. That part I didn't do. I didn't bounce from the bed to the floor. But I jump on his back. I say, you're going to effing ruin my life. He grabs me by the head and flips me over his head. Did you, land, very, did you land properly on the bed or did something happen? I did. And, but to do that stunt in your underwear, I mean, it's, <laughs> you, you, I mean, you just. But that, that whole show, the entire series is all about these moments that you don't expect. Every episode has somebody being killed in a weird way or, right. somebody, you know, it, it's sort of what makes it work. Um so tell me about the movie industry and how it's changed over the years and the television industry as well. Do you find that streaming companies like Netflix and Amazon are creating more opportunities or are they just dramatically increasing the level of competition amongst the actors for, for work? Um, I would say they're creating more uh, jobs because one actor can't do every single one of these parts. Um, they're creating a lot of good content, you know, where it's not so cookie cutter and, uh, you know, mainstream and because so many, like if you're on regular television, there are so many rules. And like, if you want to get the advertiser to advertise during your show, you can't have bad language. You can't have certain situations. You can, you know, so now with cable and, 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 uh, you know, all the streaming channels, you know, it's kind of given you a certain freedom to really express your artistic creativity. And it, I think, even more, it, it's allowed other people's writing and things to, to be exposed to a much uh, greater audience and, and a bigger variety. Now, the pandemic has affected the number of movies and TV shows being produced in California over the last year, uh, but hopefully the industry will bounce back to normal soon. Are you seeing any signs of a return to normalcy in the industry yet, or is it too soon um, to tell? Well, I mean, the the interesting thing is, I so I, I had to move uh, to the East Coast for a little while because I'm taking care of my parents, but everything's remote now. So I, I, I have to tell you, I auditioned constantly lately for um, stuff all over the country in this little room. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't mind my asking, uh, what state are you in? I'm, I'm in Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, so you've worked on a lot of highly successful movies and TV shows. 
by the way, I once drove through Pennsylvania and I couldn't believe how many mountains there were. <laughs> it took forever to get through Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is a very big state. It's deceiving because it's sideways and not lengthwise. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But, uh, but anyways, you've been in a lot of highly successful movies and TV shows. Uh, can you tell while you're working on them, which one's going to be a hit um, or not? Um, or do you have to wait until you see the final product? You know, there's so much that goes into every project. And, you know, as the actor, you're just one part of it. Um, that's a good question. I, I can't tell. And, you know, for me, like I said, every time I go on set, it's for me, it's about the work. It's about doing the best possible job I can embody in a character and bringing it to life. So I don't get into the future about it. Um, so I, I don't really know how to answer that question. I just, I, I love acting and I always enjoy the next day when I feel satisfied and a nice tired. <laughs> yeah. Well, when it comes to, you know, various genres and subject matters, do you have a preference or does it just come down to the quality of the director and the writing and the character? It comes down to the character. Like if I've played that character before and then sometimes it comes down to uh, the director and the writing and who's doing it. And if it's a good, you know, if it's a good match for me, if it's good for my career, um, you know, every now and then there's something I don't, you know, I don't um, have an affinity for, but I, 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 I understand very odd characters and I enjoy things that are kind of quite removed from myself. If you weren't acting, what would you be doing? I don't know, something artistic, like maybe um, interior design or... Um, you, know who, you know who else is working on homes? Vanilla Ice. I know, I know, that's so funny. I know that he works on homes. Um, Have you seen his show? Where is his show? Is it on HGTV? Where is it? It's, I don't think it's on HGTV. It's one of the other channels, but I think if you just go to On Demand on your cable and just, just say his name... Eye say okay. his name it should come up but i was surprised at at, at the kind of work he's doing their their mansions and and some of it's really impressive now this may be these may have been filmed before the pandemic but still uh it's uh, it's interesting i think you guys might have that in common once again right right because i'm actually quite handy and i like to um i like to find metal furniture that's kind of decrepit and then i resurface it and make it into something um else that's actually very pretty because of the resurfacing and I think shiny metal is so pretty. So. Mm -hmm. So I understand that you're an advocate for, for pet care organizations. Can you tell us about how all that came about? I'm an advocate, not for pet care, but for um, abandoned animals for sure. Um, that came about because um, I had gotten this, um, Pitbull Hunk, who had five months to live, and he was very sweet, and he had had a very heinous life uh, as a bait dog. And if you don't know what a bait dog is, I'm not going to tell you. Um, I don't understand people sometimes. Um, anyway, um, he had cancer. He had five months to live. And, and so I was going to love him for five months, which turned into five years because he'd never had any kind of love before. And so I also had, I, you know, give him a bit of operation, but, um, and then I, I loved him so much. So then I got a dog that looked similar to him and I didn't understand about dogs at the time, but yeah, I'm an advocate for um, abandoned animals and mistreated animals. And um, did you find yeah. out, did you find out that he had five years to live uh, because of cancer before, five months five months rather before, before or after you decided to get him before um and they told me i was a martyr they told you you were a martyr yeah meaning meaning that it was like because i had just lost my dog of 12 years oh okay. i was gonna lose another dog within six months so yeah. they thought that was crazy but i mean his tumor shrank so it became operable um, and he had a great life. I'm very proud of the life I've given the animals I've rescued. Yeah, I had a golden that was just great. And then one day uh, I reached out to pet him under his throat and there's a lump the size of a baseball out of nowhere. Yeah. And so they, they, they just don't live as long as you'd like them to. 
No, um, it's the it's the condition of unconditional love. And do you have a? You, you said you have a new dog now. Uh, I had well, I had so I helped start Angel City Pitbulls. I've always worked with the rescue train, um, and uh, um, oh my God, what's my favorite one right now? Um, that I give money to all the time. Start. How hard is that? Start. Is that Start. the name? Is that the name of the website? No, that's the name of the rescue group. They um they actually uh do humongous buses and they go and find um and pick up dogs that have been treated terribly in Tijuana as well as you know you know all over. And what about what about you said you started Angel City? What exactly is that? Angel City um, Pitbull Rescue in Los Angeles. Okay. Um, it's Katie Larkin, and um, I'm not involved in it anymore. But um, I did. It was me and Katie in the very beginning. All right. Well, before we wrap things up, is there anything else you would like to promote or call attention to? You know, I did do something, but I, I haven't seen it. And like I said, you know, I'm not, I, I don't like watching myself, you know? And so like, until I see it, I am always afraid to say what I've done. Isn't that terrible? I need to get better at self-promotion, you know? Well, listen, it has been a real pleasure talking with you. I want to wish you continued you. success. Thank and you. thank you for coming on the show and tell you that you're always welcome back. Oh, well, thank you. I'll come back whenever you want. This is lovely. Well, we hope you enjoyed that interview as much as we did. I want to thank our viewers for watching and tell you that we're going to have more great celebrity interviews coming up and more breaking news stories uh, in the future. So we encourage you to subscribe to the free channel, click on the notification bell and get notified every time we post a new story. See you soon. Bye-bye.